What's up, everybody? Welcome to your self-helpless snack, where we give you a little taste of the self-helpless podcast with a mini episode. Hope you enjoy this bite and have a great day. So I wanted to share my skincare routine with you all. Uh, we've done several episodes in the past on different kind of beauty regimens and skincare things and skin health. And a lot of you know, my former co-host Kelsey Cook is very interested in different uh, makeup and beauty and skincare products, stuff like that. Many of you have also referenced the episode we did with Whitney Cummings, where she shared all the different products that she uses for her skin. And at some point, I remember promising to you that I would share my step-by-step -step routine, which is only a few steps. Most of you know I'm a pretty big minimalist. I try to keep things simple whenever possible. And a couple things about my routine. I do not fuck with anything that isn't both vegan and cruelty-free. It's got to be both. If you're new to those labels, vegan means that there's no animal-derived ingredients in the product. And then cruelty-free means that the product was not tested on any animals. A lot of brands are not transparent about that stuff. So if you give a shit about those things, you definitely have to look for both of those uh, labels or look into their descriptions and stuff like that. So that's one thing to note. Uh, the second thing about my routine, I don't put anything on my face that I can't pronounce. So take your methylazabazone and your hydrocloxifacin and get the fuck out of here. Okay, I don't put it on my face. Thank you so much. That's just a personal preference. I like to put things on my face, things that I recognize. I know where it comes from. Maybe it's an ingredient that I've eaten in the past, you know, stuff like that. All right, so I'm gonna share my routine with you and the products that I use. And then I'll wrap up with a little extra nugget and story and uh, we'll be good to go. Okay, so I love the brand Coco Kind. They are not sponsoring the podcast right now. They are not sponsoring this episode. I've just been using them for quite some time now. And I like the transparency of their brand. I like that I can pronounce the ingredients. You'll look at the bottle and it's like one ingredient involved, maybe three. So really love the simplicity of it and uh, the, the products have just felt so great on my skin. So we're not starting off great here because I went to go purchase one of my staple products with them and I cannot find it. So I don't know if it's been discontinued or if it's out of stock, but I cannot find it on the website. But I use their um, chlorophyll not to be confused with chloroform, which is used for kidnapping and making people unconscious. Please do not confuse these things on this episode um, and get my skincare routine canceled. So I use this chlorophyll exfoliator mask, which I'm going to have to figure out a new thing. What I liked about this exfoliant is that it was just this green powder, really fine, kind of like really fine green dirt that I would either mix with water or my face wash or some kind of face oil. And I would use that on my face two, three times a week, just when I felt like I needed a little scrubbing. And the, the uh, ingredients are things like spirulina powder and wheatgrass powder, stuff like that. And uh, wow, can't find it. So hey, if you have any recommendations on how I can replace that, I'm sure there's another chlorophyll mask or exfoliant somewhere that I can find. I'm also thinking I might just use or try one of their other face masks. So TBD on that, but I do have an exfoliant of some kind. And then I use the Coco Kind um, facial cleanser. It's the oil to milk cleanser. Love that one. I either use that by itself um, several times a week, or I mix it with that chlorophyll uh, dirt mask um, for a little extra exfoliation. To moisturize, I use the Coco Kind Chia Face Oil, one ingredient, Chia Oil, baby. Love it. So I don't use a lotion-based moisturizer. I use that, that oil. I think we've talked on the show before. Somebody at some point said that uh, lotion breeds bacteria and oil doesn't, or oil has a much lower count of bacteria in it, something like that. So that kind of just stuck and got lodged in my head. And now I use this oil as a moisturizer. And then for a spot treatment, when I get a pimple, stuff like that, I love uh, the brand Lush. They have something called Grease Lightning Tea Tree and Aloe Gel, and it's a spot treatment. It's truly incredible. I mean, you use a little dab of it and I, I swear overnight I will wake up and the pimple is gone or just almost non-existent. It's, it's so much smaller. So that stuff is incredible, uh, powerful stuff. And my little sister is the one who introduced that to me. So thank you, Abby. That's uh, been fantastic. And then 
I actually have little face towels. I've always had very sensitive skin. I get sunburnt within three minutes of being outside. Any kind of little touch or scratch, my skin is red immediately. So I use 100% bamboo or bamboo cotton face towels. They're incredibly soft and I will use that to uh, wash my face, dry my face. I just have a basket of maybe 10 of those always ready to go in my closet and can't recommend those enough, especially if you have sensitive skin. And then here's my big secret ingredient. Are you ready for this? It's called water. Ever heard of it? This is really cutting edge shit. Sometimes I don't wash my face or put anything on it at all. I just take one of my little bamboo face towels, put it under my faucet, and then just wipe my face with this soaking wet cloth. And I won't do anything else. And I probably do that a few times a week. So half of my week, I'm not doing shit except for wiping my face down with that soft, wet cloth because I find it exfoliates, it cleans, but it gives my skin some breathing room. So half the week, I'm not putting anything on my face. The other half, I'm using these very gentle cleansing and moisturizing products. And I would say this is more intuitive skincare for me. I just wake up in the morning and I look at my face and be like, mm, what does it seem like it needs? Uh, does it need a little moisturizer? Does it need just a little wipe down and let my natural oils do their thing? I don't know. I just kind of check in and then I do the same thing in the evening. Oh, one thing I forgot that I do use as needed. I love the brand Pacifica, another wonderful, like transparent brand, vegan, cruelty free, all the things. And um, I will sometimes use their uh, makeup remover wipes. I'm also pretty sure that Pacifica brand, their wipes are biodegradable. I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on it, but I think they're made out of plants, something like that. So I use those sparingly, but I do have those uh, in my cupboard. All right, just to recap. So I have some kind of exfoliant. I'm not sure what it's going to be if uh, Coco Kind doesn't bring that thing back. So if you have any recommendations, please reach out to me. I would love to know what you use. If not, I'm just going to be in uh, experimenting mode until I find my next staple exfoliant. So I have one exfoliant, one cleanser, one moisturizer, one spot treatment, my little face towels water, and sometimes those makeup wipes. I think that covers it. And of course, sometimes I get gifted something nice, you know, a nice skincare product, or I see something new that I'm curious to try. I will sometimes try things here and there, but these are the staples that have been part of my routine for years now, I would say. All right, and then a little extra hot tip slash story time. I'm still very surprised that I get compliments on my skin as somebody who struggled with acne growing up. I had moderate to severe acne is what my dermatologist at the time told me. I started having breakouts, I think around 10 years old, really early. And I actually went on Accutane two different times in my life. Once when I was around 15, and then 10 years later, when I was about 25, I went on Accutane again. And the second time I went on it, it worked for a short period of time and then it just, my acne came back with a vengeance. So the first time around at 15, it worked pretty well. I still had some shitty breakouts here and there, but it wasn't anything close to what I'd been dealing with. However, I had some gnarly side effects. I ended up having like exercise induced asthma while I was taking it. I ended up having some really bad digestive issues. And then at 25, it was like, fuck you. Um, and what I what I realize now that I wasn't aware of at the the second time around is a year or so before I went on Accutane the second time at 25. So I was 24 at this time. I ate plant based for a year. I had a friend at the time who was trying it. I was interested in it. Um, you know, at that age, I was more interested in the benefits to my health or my looks or you know trying to help myself get maybe a little bit of a definition in my stomach, whatever, whatever the reasons and health is a great reason. That's fine. And so I did that for about a year. And ultimately, after a year, I went back to eating uh, meat, dairy, eggs, all kinds of stuff. And um, I've talked about this on the podcast before I really caved because of social reasons and kind of not wanting to feel like left out. And so I just, uh, I just started, you know, eating what everybody else was eating uh, again. It was at that same time 
my skin started breaking out really badly. And I went back to the dermatologist and got the Accutane uh, prescription. Also, around that same time, I had been put on an antibiotic. So my gut health between those two things and shifts was just absolutely destroyed. And then, uh, you know, the Accutane helped for a little bit. And then it just all came flooding back. And it took me a while to even consider that the change in what I was eating was impacting my skin like that. It just wasn't my first thought. It wasn't my go-to anything. I just thought the things were totally unrelated. So I kind of dealt with this um, this acne a couple years in my mid-20s and then not related to my skin issues. But um, honestly, because of this podcast, it really led me into really looking into veganism and what that really meant and documentaries like earthlings and now dominion and stuff like that are out there and a lot of people have watched them I highly recommend them by the way and uh you know now game changers has come out and so i started really learning about the environmental benefits the benefits to animal welfare the benefits to human health and disease prevention and all that stuff. And I just decided to make that shift back to not only to plant-based eating, but um, being vegan as a whole, which I know a lot of people, this th- these terms are used interchangeably, but uh, the difference is being plant-based is eating a plant-based diet. Being vegan is not just food related. It also expands to uh, the products that you purchase, the activities that you participate in, things like vegan leather instead of cow leather. You're not spending money on entertainment that involves animals. You're not, you know, riding a horse and carriage. You're not, um, you're going to, you know, animal sanctuaries instead of zoos, stuff like that. So food is just one aspect of it. It it also expands into, you know, beauty and products and entertainment, fashion, stuff like that. So I completely resonated with that way of living. And to be honest, by that point, there was also a ton more delicious vegan options. I mean, in the beginning, those vegan cheeses were fucking nasty, you guys. Um, So anyway, it was just much easier uh, of a transition. And I kid you not, in under a week, maybe as soon as four days, under a fucking week of going back to eating plant-based, eating vegan, my skin not only was my acne better, it was just completely gone. It's been non-existent since. This is without Accutane, without any kind of special kind of uh, acne products, right? Like I used to have to get uh, prescription face washes and stuff like that from my dermatologist. This is nothing. So I'm 34 now. This is six, seven years ago now that I made this change. And it was immediate. So I want to share this because I really thought my skin was only impacted by the stuff I put on it topically. But obviously what I was putting in my body had an enormous effect on my skin health and, uh, you know, the acne that I experienced. And part of me wishes I could go back in time and try eating vegan when I was a teenager to see if that would have helped if it would have prevented it. And we've done many episodes now with different doctors. And, you know, I've kind of brought that up of the impact that swapping meat, dairy, and eggs with the plant-based versions of all of those things, which are, they look the same, they taste the same, they're fucking phenomenal, especially, especially now that there's been so much innovation. So I know how infuriating skin issues can be. And uh, if I could go back in time, my gosh, my only wish is that I would have done all this so much sooner and potentially would have been able to avoid that really harsh, you know, Accutane stuff. So anyway, um, that's my skincare episode for you all. Sorry, it's about, you know, uh, two years late, but better late than never. And I'll do a beauty kind of makeup uh, episode for you as well, because like this skincare stuff, I only use a, a few things. All right, everybody. Talk to you soon. Thank you for tuning in to Self Helpless. You can find our brand new merch, Patreon community, and other fun goodies at selfhelplesspodcast.com. We'd be thrilled if you left an Apple podcast review, shared this episode with a friend, or post about it on Instagram and tag us at selfhelplesspodcast so we could repost you and say hi. As an independently produced show, we sincerely appreciate your support. Thanks, everybody.